Yeah, I don't even want to preach anymore. That was a blessing in itself right there. Um, if you would, turn, turn to your Bibles to 1 Timothy 4.12, please. While you're turning, I just want to say how, how much of an honor and a privilege it is um, not only to be speaking in front of you today, but just being your youth pastor for the fact that you entrust me with your, your young people, your kids, your grandkids. And that means the world to me, and I really enjoy the... Can, can we turn this down a little bit? Just a little bit. Thank you, mate. Um, but just the fact that, that everyone trusts me um, here with the young people, it's, it's a true blessing. Um, it's, a, it's a blessing to be able to come and speak before my, my church today. Um, I'm not going to say I've never been given the opportunity, but this is the first time I'm going to take advantage of the opportunity. Um, so that's on me. But, but it is a privilege. It's an honor. Um, and what, what I want to talk about today is a little different, but at the same time I feel like it's something that was laid on my heart and something that we as a church, as a family, as a community need to hear. So with that, in 1 Timothy 4.12, Paul's talking. He says, Do not let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set the example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. And one of the, something that I really love about this message is that it goes really well with what I believe is what our goal for 2018 is, is SPHC, and it's discipleship. Because Paul took Timothy under his wing, discipled him to teach him in order for him to grow and lead a church by himself. So when you think about, well, this, doesn't, this isn't talking to me because it says, don't let anyone look down on you because you're young. Church, compared to God, we're all young. So to me, that speaks to every single person in this room right now. So do not let anyone look down on you because you are young. But he also goes on to say, but set the example. For the believers. Because church, let me tell you something. Or let me ask you something. If we're not going to set the example, who is? If we're not going to set the example for all the young people, for each other, who is? That's something for us to think about. Because to me, I don't want anyone else setting the example for these young people and all the others throughout the room. Except someone that you can trust. The someone that speaks life. And that speaks truth. So... What I would like for us to do is to go through each one of these points um, that Paul is talking about by setting the example. And first off, Paul says we must set the example with our speech. And I think Carly was right on, right on point when she was talking about how we talk to one another, how we uplift one another. But what I would like to do is share a post that I seen on Facebook the other day. And I, as soon as I seen it, I said, that's going in the message. It says, sticks and stones may break my bones, but your words will never hurt me. It says, that's the most inaccurate quote ever. Words do hurt, and words stay in people's minds. Be careful the words that you speak into other people's lives, because words will last a lifetime. What you say? But what I loved as a child when I heard, sticks and stones may break my bones, but your words will never hurt you. As a child, that gave you confidence. That no matter what anyone said, no matter what anyone threw at you, it did not matter, because they were just words. It didn't matter. But like that, like that quote says, the older you get, the more you realize that words do hurt. They hurt you in so many different ways. In the Bible, King David compares your tongue to a weapon. That's scary. Listen, listen, church, I thought about this, but I, I just feel like it's on my heart right now. But when we think about in high school, we think about middle school, and that, that's where my mind is because that's what I, what, I, what I deal with. That's what I talk to. Um, that's where I'm at. But... When we think about the high schools and all the things that are going on in the world of middle school and high schools and all these things, like thank you for our security team who is here protecting us on a, day, on a daily, every Sunday basis, Wednesday night. But what was laid on my heart was that everyone's talking about gun control. Church, when are we going to start talking about tongue control? When? Because that is, that is just as dangerous in a different way. I'm not here to offend anybody in a different way. But it's just as dangerous. Would you believe that, people, that some, some, some kids aren't just being shot up, but they're committing suicide because of the way that they're talked to? Like, that's so sad. 
But church, I encourage you today to be careful of how you talk to people. Be careful of what you say to people because you don't know who's listening. And you, not only do you not know who's listening, but you don't know what they're thinking you're talking about. Be careful. Be cautious. Know your audience. It's, it's crazy to think that, that me, and, me and Brooke can be thinking, talking about something. Well, then the next thing you know, all this spreads throughout the church that me and Brooke, something's going on. No, it's not real. It didn't happen. I just made that up. Sorry. Um, but it's like, you have no idea what me and Brooke were talking about. But you overheard and you, took, you, you made an assumption about what was being said. The same with me and Tommy. If me and Tommy talk about something, some, someone overhears something. Oh, y'all don't believe what Tommy and Caleb are plotting? No. No. We're talking about the football game. <laughs> like, and it's like, church, let's be mindful of what we say. Let's you, we, we can use our words for two different ways, for life or for death. And I want to use my words for life. In First Proverbs, in, in chapter 15, it says, A gentle tongue turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. What Carly was saying, when you speak life into someone, it can change someone's whole mood. It can change someone's whole day. No matter what they've been going through, no matter how rough that situation is, all you have to do is use one simple word, and it could change that. But not only what you say, but how you say it. I know a lot of people, especially in high school and in middle school and some in college, they have no filter. As parents, you probably know they have no filter. They say what's on their mind. They say what comes out. They say what they want to say, and it makes no difference. But young people, if I can encourage you today, respect your parents. Love your parents. Talk to your parents with respect. Preaching to myself as well on that one. Um, So first off, we must set the example with our speech. Secondly, we must set the example with our conduct. When I think of conduct, I think about my attitude. I think about how we as a church treat one another. Not only in these four walls, but outside these four walls. How do we treat one another? Do we treat people different? Do we talk to people differently? Look, just because you're in church, you shouldn't just stay in the church. When you leave, your mindset, your perspective in church should be the same outside of church. If you're happy when you walk into church and you're like, well, just because I go to church, I'm joyful. I have joy in my heart. I'm happy. I'm excited. But then as soon as you walk out, you're like, back to real world. No. Shouldn't be like that, church. Shouldn't be like that. Also, when I think of conduct, I think about the fruit of the Spirit. The fruits of the Spirit. There's plural. There's more. There's more than just one, and that's the great thing about it. It's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. In the Bible, Paul says, they will know you by the fruits that you bear. Church, would you believe that I have a story, and it's going to be funny, so y'all, y'all be ready to laugh. It's going to be good. But at the same time, it's going to be a little serious because it's real life. The state trooper pulled over, or no, hold on, let me start from the beginning. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. This woman, this, 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 this car cut her off in traffic. She, she just let him have it. She laid on the horn. She, she flew beside him, threw him some finger. I don't remember which one. Cut back in front of him. Cut back in front of him, slammed on the brakes, made him honk at her. And she felt great about it. She said, ain't nobody going to do that to me. Ain't nobody going to cut me off. No. Next thing you know, she sees some blue and red lights. State trooper. Pulls her over. He said, ma'am, do you know why I pulled you over? She said, no, sir. Was I speed? No, ma'am. Did I use my signal? No, ma'am, you used your signal. Well, what was it? Well, you know, at first, I seen this car cut you off. And I was going to stop and I was going to pull them over for cutting you off without using their signal. But then I seen how you acted. And she said, okay. And he said, well, not only the way you acted, but I seen some stickers on the back of your car that says Jesus Freak had the church logo and church if you have an SPHC ambulance sticker on your car you better drive like you like you like you go to church okay (laughs) so 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 the state trooper goes on to say he says well I seen all these stickers on your vehicle that said Jesus Freak that had that had your church logo on it it had a Bible verse on the side and he said I thought the car was stolen 
by our conduct, church, by the way we do things, by the way we drive down the road, by the way we're respectful to people, to one another, to love one another, with our conduct. Church, sometimes I feel like the church is so worldly and the world is so churchy that we've, we're mistaken on about some things. We see how things happen in the world and it messes with our conduct. This is okay. We can do that. I can talk to this person this way because I know at the end of the day they're going to forgive me. No. It shouldn't be like that, church. Through your conduct... I think about some of the young people. I think about some of the students that that I talk to and deal with. And one thing that always goes through my mind, it's like I don't know their home life per se. But I also know that most likely they're the only Jesus their family is going to see. And the only way they're going to see that is through your conduct. How you treat your parents, how you talk to your parents. The way you go out of your way to wash the dishes. Like, no? Okay. But our conduct, church, we need to set the example with our conduct. And thirdly, our love. Would you believe it's one thing to say you love someone and another to actually love them? I love how Pastor Eric preached two weeks ago, right before Valentine's Day, and he talked about love. And I said, oh, no. Everything I want to say about love, he pretty much summed it up, which is awesome. And I'm not upset at all. But what I want us to talk about is is a little bit about love. We must set the example with our love. Go out of your way to make someone feel loved. How hard is that? Throughout the week, how hard is it to go out of your way to make someone feel loved? Because I can tell you I love you all day long, and it don't mean a thing. To some of us, love is just a word. It means nothing. But to God, it means something. God sent his son to die for you and me. And if that's not what love is, I don't know what love is. And to some of us, we haven't experienced love because we haven't experienced where love comes from. That's God. Because God is love. And until we experience God's love, we'll never know how to love one another. We'll never know how to love ourselves and be happy with ourselves until we know the love of God. Our youth group, our youth group um, name is All In. We're the All In student ministry here at Stonville. And, and I was thinking, how hard, excuse me, how hard was, would it be for all of us to just go all in with everything that we do? Think about that. Go all in. Because I know, I know some of us might not have the best job. I know some of us might not have the best home life. I know some of us might not even like work, that we're in school. Where's some things at? Let me get an amen. Um, but, but if we go all in with everything that we do, we'll have love in our heart. We'll make way to love people. It won't feel like a burden anymore. You'll want to love people. I just like the sound of that love. I want to love people even when you don't deserve it. Because Jesus loved each and every one of you even when you didn't deserve it. Why can't we do the same? Show love. I have a shirt that says show love, and I never realized how significant those two words are. Because show, it's like an act. A play, it's a show. It's a TV show. It's not real. But then love. I said, well, hold on, that ain't right. But the more I think about it, it's like everywhere I go and people see that my shirt says show love, I want them to feel love. I don't want them to just read it. I want them to feel it. And how hard is it for us, not only as Christians, not only as believers, but as people to love one another? Mm. We must share the love of God. How else do we share the love of How do we share the love of God? By getting out of these four walls. Sharing love. Like I said, don't be, don't be someone on Sunday and someone different on Monday. Be the same all the time. If you come in here with a bunch of love in your heart and then you go to work and you despise your boss, don't do that. <laughs> Doesn't matter. I love you. <laughs> love, love where you work. Love what you do. 
If it's a terrible situation, make the best of the situation. For some people, they think God made a mistake about what family they're in. God didn't make a mistake. Like I said earlier, you might be the only person that can lead your family to Jesus. You might be the only, only person that people see Jesus through. Show your family love. Love one another. If something's broken, fix it. If there's division, mend it. That's what God wants. And that's the, that's the, that's the same mentality we should all want. Because as a church, we ought to love one another. And it sounds so simple to say, but the action's a little more difficult, a little more time-consuming, a little more effort to be shown. But guess what? It's worth it. It's worth it. Mike preached one Wednesday night and we come in here and he talked about time, how time's not going to matter one day. So with the time that you have, what are you going to do with it? Are you just going to be upset with your family? Are you going to be mad at one another? Are you going to come to church bitter and let other people affect your worship? Mm. You don't have time for that. We don't have time for that. Church, out of all the things that are going on outside these walls, when you come in these walls, like JP said, he feels safe. And not, not just with the security team, but spiritually safe. Like he can express who he is, who God made him to be. Why should we be any different? But it's because each and every one of us loving JP that it makes him feel that way. When he walks in the door, do you feel loved? Yeah, feel loved. Church, we have to set the example with our love. Fourth, we have to set the example with our faith. Church, how much faith do you really have? Think about that. How much faith do you really have? When your faith is tested, are you consistent or do you give up? Do you put your faith into action? Church, think about it. How strong is your faith? Because church, I know when we come into prayer meeting, it's so easy to be like, I believe God can can heal my sister. I believe that God can heal my dad. I believe that God can do whatever he wants. But when it's tested, are you faithful? When you've been praying for weeks and months and it hasn't came to pass, are you faithful? Church, because when I say that we need to set, when Paul said we need to set the example with our faith, people watch that. People watch that. Because if I didn't trust Buddy in his faith, I, I sure wouldn't come to prayer meeting. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to listen to him prayer because, pray to, because to me he'd just be talking. But he's not. He's spending time with the one person who loves him more than anyone else in the world. That's what prayer is. And you have to have faith when you go into prayer. If anyone would look at us and, and look at our church and say, what's one word you can use to describe our church? A lot of people would say prayerful. We're a prayerful church. But church, here's the thing. When people see that and know that and they come and they see how we act differently because our prayers aren't being answered, what's that going to do? They're a prayerful church, but they don't believe in what they pray. Church, I believe in what I pray for. I have a big God and I will pray some big prayers. Amen. Church, I think about, about one amazing lady. Her name was Miss Janelle Hammonds. She battled for a long time. And I was talking to, to Miss Rhonda in her office one day. I think it was the day we found out that she had passed and went home. And I said, Rhonda, I want to have that kind of faith. I want to have the kind of faith that it doesn't matter what the situation is. I look to God and I depend on God. And I wait for him. That's the kind of faith I want to have. If you want to look at someone to set the example for you in faith, you look at Miss Janelle's life. She set the example for faith with whatever she did and everything that she did. She believed until that last breath that God was going to heal her. And I believe he did in a different way than what, probably what she was expecting, in a different way than what we were expecting, but he healed her. She's not in pain anymore. And that's okay. Even when we pray and we, we look to God, and at the time, we're like, Lord, there's no way you can do it. Yes, he can. But Lord, I need you now. No, not now. Not now. I'll take care of it. And it might not be the way that we expect it to look, and that's okay. 
You have to be willing to be okay with that and trust and have faith because faith is believing in something you can't see. I don't see God, but I have faith in God. The God who created everything, the God that created the universe, he created me and you the way he wanted, I have faith in him. But church, we must set the example with our faith and what we believe and how consistent we are with our faith. In Ephesians 2, chapter 8, it says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. Walk by faith and not by sight. When you walk out the door, you're walking by faith. Let me ask you something, church. Who's your faith standing on? Because mine sounds God. And I pray and I hope that every single person in here, every, per, every single person listening, that your faith is on God. Because other people will let you down. Other people won't come through like God will. And there's going to be times when you're in doubt. But guess what? God's working. That's, that's what I love about God. He's always working. Fifth and last. We must set the example with our purity. And now two things came to mind with that. We have purity within our hearts. And what I mean by that is, is as a church, in everything that we do and everything that we go out and try to do with an outreach, with the food bank, um, with men's, women's ministry, with the wings team, with the encouragement team, everything that we do as a church and represent this church, I think we need to have a pure heart. In every way, and what I mean by that is you can, you can go out and do anything. You can do whatever you want. And it don't mean anything. It doesn't bless you. It doesn't bless the person that you are trying to bless. Billy Graham, he passed away here recently, but he said two things. He said, we have two arms. One is to give and one is to receive. So what that means to me is that, well, I need to give something. No, hold on. Sorry. Mm -mm. I need to re- I'm going to receive something and then I'm going to give something. But also with a pure heart, it's like whatever we do, we need to do it with a pure heart or it's not going to work. There's been multiple times when I've, when I've tried to put things together. Me and my youth team have tried to put things together, and we've, I've spent weeks, long hours, long nights trying to get everything together, and you have, like, two people show up. Oh, man, only two people. But, but listen, here's the thing. This is something that I've come to realize. My heart wasn't in it. I, I was thinking about, we're going to have 150 young people come, and it's going to be awesome. We're going to have fireworks, and we're going to do this and do that. But my heart wasn't in it. I just wanted it to look good. But church, if we do things with a pure heart, if we try to reach our community with a pure heart, it'll work. My uncle was telling me about how he how they had at their church they've been doing stuff. They've been they've been trying to work things and try to try to grow their church and try to try to get out into the community and outreach. But he says, I feel like our heart's not truly in it. And I said, Well, what's happening? He said, It's not working. But church, if we want things to work, if we want to see lives changed, if we want to see us expand out of these four walls, which we, we talk about a lot, our heart's got to be behind it. When we put together these, these, um, when we put together these snack packs, when we put together these, these uh, backpacks for, for kids and put lunch in them and food in them for them to go, y'all, if we're just doing it just to do it, it's not going to bless anybody. The only thing that's going to happen is the kid's going to get physically fed. He's not going to get spiritually fed. And that's something that we need to take to heart because we want to see people grow. We want to see people, yes, we want them to have food in their bodies, but we want their souls to be getting fed just as much as their bodies. And everything that we do, church, we need to do it with a pure heart. Pure heart. And secondly, when I think about purity, I think about sexual purity. And church, that's something that, that's, that's kind of a touchy subject, especially with me with high school and middle schoolers. That's a little touchy subject. But I'm going to let you know, it's worth it. God speaks about, about, about saving yourself for marriage. And, and young people and, and anyone else in this room, if, you, if, you, if you've messed up, you've made that mistake, God offers something that's called forgiveness and grace. And that's something that's so beautiful about Jesus. But, but what I believe, and I'm going to be... This is what I believe. I believe if you are sorry for something, you, you, you ask for forgiveness, God will forgive you. But what I also believe is you can't keep doing it. You have to stop. You'll wipe your slate clean, but you have to stop. 
Impurity is nothing to play with. As adults, as parents, I'm not a parent, but I know how a lot of you feel. You're worried about your children. You're worried about your young people. And in church, I worry about it too. I worry about them too. Because I care just as much about them as you do. I love them just as much as you do. And it's something that is very, very rampant in, in the culture today is that it's okay. It's cool. It doesn't matter. It's not feeling. You don't feel anything. It's, you know, you don't catch feelings. You can do it one and done and that's it. Like, no. It's not how God intended it to be. God intended it to be something perfect, worth the wait, no matter how hard it gets, because church, it's hard. It's so difficult, and it's, it's, it's hard, and when you, when you have someone call you at, at one in the morning, two in the morning, it's like, Caleb, hey, I just need to talk. Like, this has been going through my mind. This is something I've been dealing with, and I don't know what else to do. Please talk to me. Please talk with me. I need some encouragement. And church, if I can encourage you with one thing today, encourage your young people. Encourage them. Love them. No matter how crazy they are, no matter how insane they drive you, love them, care about them, and encourage them. Church, we need to set the example in our lives. Because like I said at the beginning, if we don't, who will? Church, I I had a young person come to me and say, Caleb, you know what I don't like about church and the old people? I said, whoa. I said, said, what? I said, you can't say that. (laughs) can't call them that. What's wrong with you? Um, They're like, well, you know, the age. I said, nope, mm, that's almost out of date. Nope, aged, bad word too. But I said, I said, the people who who care about you more than the people your age group cares about you. That's how I look at you. You care more about them than their friends do. You love them more than your friends, their friends do. And I guarantee you pray for them more than their friends do. And that ain't something to take lightly. But that young person went on to say, but Caleb, I feel like they use the Bible. They use the Bible more as a window to look at my sins, look at my mistakes, and to judge me more than they do a mirror to reflect on their own life. Church, that's how some of the...